one. Welcome to Community Foundation Spotlight. I'm Spicer Bell. I'm the president of the Community Foundation of the Eastern Shore. And through this series of programs, uh, we shine that Community Foundation Spotlight on uh, nonprofit organizations that are making a difference in our community. Uh, today, my guest is Laura Botnelli. Laura is the executive director of the Ward Museum here in Salisbury. Welcome, Laura. Thank you. Thank Happy you. to be here. Glad to have you here. I, you know, I, I love Ward, the Ward Museum. I, unfortunately, Ward Museum still can, sometimes is one of those hidden treasures of our community. Well, we do quite a bit of outreach to try to allow people to come in and find us. That's right. And hopefully, hopefully uh, our viewers today, mm -hmm. if there's some who haven't been in, they'll, uh, uh, they'll find you. And, and it's always wonderful to find the War Museum because it's ever-changing. And we're going to talk about that a little mm -hmm. bit, I think, aren't we? Yes. So, for those who aren't familiar, give a little history of the War Museum. Well, the Ward Museum of Wildfell Art is located on Shoemaker Pond in Salisbury, Maryland. Its very first home was at Salisbury University in Holloway Hall. Um, the organization was founded in order to honor the legacy of Lem and Steve Ward, who were decoy carvers from Crisfield, Maryland. Mm -hmm. And the interest related to their work and then the related art form of decorative wildfowl art had so much momentum that it led to the building of the beautiful facility that you know as the Ward Museum today. Uh, we are an affiliated foundation of Salisbury University, so quite a bit of our outreach is related to university partnerships. But we do have a incredible volume of work to engage the community, to work with young people, um, to get them to be able to experience nature, art, and tradition in ways that are new to them. And a war museum really is, is part of the legacy of the Eastern Shore. It is. It connects to so many parts of um, our community members' everyday lives. You know, the connections between art, nature, and tradition, your ability to go out onto the Delmarva Peninsula and experience the maritime, marsh, agricultural traditions, to be able to have a relaxing walk in nature, and to connect to the wildfowl of the region. Um, the Ward brothers were deeply immersed in the natural, cultural, and artistic world of Crisfield, Maryland, and had such an impact in the wider national community that it's really quite a treasure for Salisbury to have an institution that is named for such, you know, mm -hmm. humble men sure. from um, a very rural area of the Lower Eastern Shore. They were just decoy carvers. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, in essence, started uh, producing um, working detoy, decoys but were uh, it part of what brought it to become an art form. That's right. You should be one of our docents as so we go through the galleries. And, and when you walk through our galleries, you'll really get a sense of that story. Um, you start in the uh, Decoy and Time Gallery, which connects you to Native American traditions and carries through um, the early settlements um, in the Mid-Atlantic region and the use of um, different ways to trap birds for food and primarily prim primary way to do that was through gunning. And the decoy is used in order to lure these birds into a gunner's range. And what the Ward brothers are most noted for was the way that they were able to adapt the, talent, the techniques to create a gunning decoy into um, a decorative work of mm -hmm. art. So the skills that they used to make their tools were then used to make beautiful um, artistic works. And they caught the attention of thousands of people um, in their lifetime. They were featured in National Geographic three times, they received honorary doctorates from Salisbury University, and they re uh, Lem received the National Heritage Award um, from the National Endowment for the Arts, mm -hmm. which is one of the highest um, awards an individual artist can receive. And again, we are so, so pleased to have the Ward Museum named for the artists from our community. Mm -hmm. um, it really is a showcase of what is really special about Delmarva and the Lower Eastern Shore. Okay. And if, uh, if, if someone comes to the, the Ward Museum, what can they expect to see when they visit? Well, well you we talked about some of it. Yeah, know, we, you, you'll start with a sort of a historical context related to waterfowling traditions. You'll learn about the decoy in different regions of the United States. We have a whole decoy study gallery. Um, you will then be able to look at the decorative wildfowl sculpture, which is really amazing to see. Um, the Ward Museum, one, one of its major activities is to hold the Ward World Championship every mm -hmm. year, and the winners from that competition are displayed in the galleries. And when you walk into our World Championship gallery, you're walking into a fine art gallery. So you'll go from an immersion experience with history into the, a study of an American antique and into this um, 
really art gallery showcasing some beautiful wildfowl sculpture. Um, the grounds of the museum are also very accessible um, for engaging creatively with nature. We have nature trails that go along um, Shoemaker Pond, there's a fishing pier, there's a, um, um, a viewing scope and other amenities along the trail. The trail is available free from, you know, um, dawn to dusk. There's, if as a family, you can pull a backpack out at, for free from our um, gift shop and be able to walk the trail. It has your binoculars. It has your field guides. And so we have been trying to allow our regular, um, regular is the wrong word, the grounds of the museum to really be opened up to, mm -hmm. our, to our visitors. Um, and, and, and it's not uncommon to be st able to stand on your deck and, and spot an osprey or an eagle or certainly all uh, different herring. types of things. Um, we are really, um, it, it, there's a wealth of resources along Shoemaker Pond. It's really a beautiful natural center in urban Salisbury. Um, we have, um, we've even seen a uh, river otter in the pond. Mm -hmm. um, we connect, our pond connects to um, the creeks which connect to the Wacomico River and ultimately the Chesapeake Bay. So we're part of the Chesapeake Bay watershed and you can walk our pond and then even walk through Salisbury City Park to the Salisbury Zoo and then ultimately to the downtown. And what in that scope you're seeing is a real range of the resources mm -hmm. of um, the Delmarva Peninsula all within a walk reach and um, is just a really full experience mm -hmm. about what is Salisbury, Maryland. Sure, absolutely. I mean, it's great, a, a great place to visit for a family mm -hmm. uh, and, and to bring the kids along because of the visit to, to Ward the Museum, you can go down to the zoo, uh, the Ben's Red Springs, mm -hmm. uh, you know, plenty of space in between for the kids to stretch their legs and, right. and that sort of thing. So. And we've been really trying to find ways that throughout the year that um, families will have um, additional opportunities at the museum besides the gallery tour and the walk along the trail mm -hmm. and so at different days of the week there are special opportunities um, and I wanted to talk a little bit about our drop-in art Saturday which is on the third Saturday mm -hmm. of the month um, it's been recently supported by the Community Foundation so thank you for that and and also uh, Salisbury Wacomico yes. Arts Council Salisbury Wacomico Arts Council you get a plug in it's, for a, that. it's they a do joint great work joint partnership and between 10 and noon on the third Saturday of the month you'll be able to bring your family in and do a free art program in the lobby of the museum and this has a whole range of things from painting to uh, easy sculpture to other types of um, easily accessible art programming. Um, you know as the summer rolls on and the weather is beautiful we might do it out under our pavilion on the back deck so we don't want you know the great weather to say don't go inside please mm -hmm. come and see us. Um, we also are really excited that it's the day after Third Friday, which is the big event in downtown Salisbury. So you can continue your momentum of engaging your community resources mm -hmm. from Third Friday to Third Saturday. So a great opportunity for for parents to do or grandparents to do mm -hmm. things with the, their children and, gra and grandchildren. I, you know, you know, I have have some grandchildren now, and and it, it uh, we're going to have to try to get some of them in town so that we can come down and participate. Yeah, and related on if you're available on Wednesdays, um, first and third Wednesdays is our Nature Tales for Tots, which is ge you know um, geared towards a much younger audience. It's a reading program and then a light craft that's done, and that's a drop-in program. It's free, um, and again, it's during the week, so smaller children who are not in school yet mm -hmm. can come in with um, a caregiver and be able to, to, mm -hmm. to work on that program. Um, it's really quite popular, and it's been a long-standing piece of the museum's offerings. Yeah. Okay, we're talking about the uh, Ward Museum here in Salisbury. My guest today is Laura Botnelli, who's the executive director there. Uh, Laura, I, other new things at the, at the museum. I understand you have the option of an audio tour now? We do. This is newly available as part of your gallery tour. Um, you've probably been to some of the larger art museums on, mm -hmm. off the, the peninsula and you get your um, electronic tour. You walk through the museum and you select and you can hear the different features of the museum. Um, it was supported by the Ch Charles and Eleanor Bound um, Family Fund. Um, Charlie was a major supporter oh, of the Ward absolutely. Museum and many community organizations. Mm -hmm. um, our docents are still available um, all year round through all the normal public hours and they are there to support and engage your tour experience as well. So now there's just an additional offering. You can take a tour with one of our uh, members of our docent pool 
possibly take out the audio tour unit, use them both in tandem, and it really is allowing the museum's collections to become that much more accessible. Mm -hmm. um, they're free, you just drop off your license, and uh, when you leave, you'll pick it up, and mm -hmm. um, it's just another layer of the interpretation at the museum. Yeah, I, it, it's always fascinating to me, of course, the Community Foundation, we've had receptions at mm -hmm. your facility several times and you do make it available for, mm -hmm. for groups to use for that. But we'll have receptions there and, and have folks in who have lived in Salisbury all their life and they'll say to me, I didn't realize they had these things. <laughs> and you, particularly the gallery where you show the world uh, 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 carving contest mm -hmm. award winners, they are just, they, they, they're breathtaking. Mm -hmm. they're, they're spectacular pieces of art. and. And, and in many cases, wonderful pieces of engineering. It, it's amazing. I know you have one there that's a, uh, it, it's a, it's a falcon or something attacking a pheasant. Mm -hmm. and, and how somebody engineers that so the birds look like they're just suspended in midair is amazing. It's, it's really, I mean, they're, like you said, works of art and works of engineering. And we are always continue to be just a astonished by what the artists are able to um, present to us each year at the World Championship. Mm -hmm. um, the winners from this year's uh, World Championship are on display in the galleries um, and it's real there for those of you who have not been able to come to the museum for whatever reason I encourage you um, to take a look we have changing exhibits throughout the year which might entice you in mm -hmm. um, we've been trying to mix up the offerings in those changing galleries to possibly engage people who might not have uh, previously thought to come to the museum mm -hmm. and you're right we still get the I've lived in Salisbury 25 years and haven't come in but then that person came and they're gonna come back so mm -hmm. sure. it's worth um, walking in the doors and seeing what there is to offer now there's a admission charge. What's there the is. admission charge it's, for the museum? It's seven dollars for an adult, five for seniors. Um, many students get in for free, children under five are free, and we have different, um, if you're a member of the Ward Museum you get in for free. Um, affiliates of Salisbury University have access for free. Um, there's many different ways mm -hmm. that we can provide you access. We have different days during the year which end up being free related to special events mm -hmm. or our receptions. So um, All they have to do is watch that marquee there on Beglin Park Rot Drive. That's right. We are always putting up um, new information. Um, I mean, uh, there are things... Um, I have a list of things to talk about today that are upcoming and some of the, I mean, every day there's a new program out there, whether it's mm -hmm. educational, exhibition, opportunities for volunteers, and really the best way to stay completely up to date about what's going on at the museum is to subscribe on our website for our electronic updates. Uh, you know, members of the Ward Museum will receive postcards telling them what we're up mm -hmm. to, um, but some things are, you know, really opportunity experiences and we maybe know a week out that an opportunity has arisen and we can publish it. Um, Let, let's give that website right here while it's fresh on mine, and, and I'm sure our friends here at PAC 14 will show it on the air. It's, it's www.wordmuseum.org, and there's a subscribe feature on the lower left-hand side. And for our Facebook users, we have a Facebook page, and there are that's a really rich way to see what's going on because we'll upload photographs, and it's just a much more lo, sort of live feed of our activities. So if somebody's interested, they can friend you on Facebook mm -hmm. and, and be kept up to date uh, uh, through that vehicle. That's right. So, Excellent. Um, uh, we're talking about other features at the at the museum. Uh, you have nature trails. You have a museum store. We do. So when you're looking for that special gift for somebody you don't know quite what mm -hmm. they need, our museum store has a really interesting range of of items mm -hmm. related to nature and art. Um, you don't have to pay the admission charge to, nope. to shop the museum store. No, you don't. You can walk right in 10 to 5, uh, Monday through Saturday, 12 to 5 on Sunday. Um, we have apparel, we have books, we have bird feeders, antique decoys, different pieces of wildfowl art, collectibles related to birds and nature. Um, there's a children's section mm -hmm. with really cool things for kids. Um, lots of things to help kids get engaged with nature, so like, you know, bug jars and little field nets and things like that. Um, and then also, you know, the fun little toys. Well, it, well the few places around here where you can get some of those uh, nature-oriented, science-oriented mm -hmm. uh, gifts for, for kids. Uh, so if somebody is, is looking for that unique gift, it, uh, it, it, we ought to make sure it pops up on their... Uh, 
on our radar screen. And I would, I don't want to forget to mention that we have um, consigned works from regional artists as well. Mm -hmm. And so if you're looking for a way to see um, the work of a new artist, um, mostly related to the museum's mm -hmm. themes of art, nature, and tradition, we'll have different things offered for sale in the shop yeah. that way. Now, I know uh, since you've been the executive director, you've done a, a lot of outreach to schools and bringing <laughs> school groups in and what have you, and you have another one that's uh, underway now. We do. Um, the museum has been doing related schools to the, actually with field trips, but then a lot of work with teachers and mm -hmm. educators. And the museum has just published its new curriculum. It's uh, called Pass It On, and it's the cultural traditions of the Lower Eastern Shore. And this was supported by many regional partners, including the Mar Maryland Heritage Area mm -hmm. Authority, Maryland Traditions, Lower Shore um, Heritage Area. And what it is, is a resource that reaches over um, the range of cultural riches of the mm -hmm. Lower Eastern Shore. Um, we deal with working the water, working the land, sporting and playing, folklore and folk life. And within that, you can really get a sense of what makes the Lower Shore um, a special place. We're going to have a launch party to showcase this new publication on May 20th. Um, it's at the museum. It's a free launch. Um, you are invited. Everyone is invited public, to it. The teachers, public is invited parents, to attend. Everyone. You'll probably start to see emails about it, and you know certainly check our Facebook page if you want to. You know not not miss out. Um, and you'll get to hear a lot more about what's actually offered. If you're a teacher, I would encourage you to be in contact with our education department because there will be actually um, free workshops for teachers to be trained in this. Mm -hmm. And in going through that training, you would get a whole resource kit mm -hmm. with many, many um, free resources related to using mm -hmm. the curriculum in your classroom. Um, it's been fully aligned with the social studies curriculum, but has um, connections to art, science, math, all different ways that the areas local history and heritage would relate to um, the primary subject areas of Maryland school system. And, and that local uh, tradition, history, heritage mm -hmm. is, is very much a part of what we are today. Mm -hmm. And yet there are pieces of it that the kids are growing up today miss. They don't, they don't, it's not available for them. So That's it's right. important we help pass that, uh, that uh, historic link along. I agree fully. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I, I mean, I grew up here on the Eastern Shore, and, and when I, you know, I think back of, I mean, I, my family had friends who were watermen. I grew up over in Cambridge, and uh, I, I can remember when in the winter, Cam, Cambridge Creek would be crammed with, with skipjacks. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we're, we're dredging for oysters and what have you. And much of that is gone, but that, uh, that is part of the history of the area. And uh, it, it, I hate to see it, uh, the, the young kids today not be aware of that that was, uh, that was our roots. Right. And that's very much a part of what our education program at mm -hmm. the museum does and also related to the museum's um, additional public programming and outreach. So the Pass It On curriculum deals with cultural heritage resources mm -hmm. and allowing children access to that information through mm -hmm. their work in the schools. Um, but additionally, we are dealing it with environmental education resources. So having children have allowed to have access to nature, that you know there might be boundaries that stop them from having those experiences outdoors. The museum has another list of offerings, which are teacher trainings and then also educational programs, programming related to environmental education. Our newest is a program called Growing Up Wild, which I believe is targeted for um, three to seven year old children and is through the Council for Environmental Education and this is a new um, curriculum training for our region um, and the Ward Museum is a, mm -hmm. one of the lead facilitators of that. If you're an educator and are interested in engaging with these resources, I continue to be amazed at the number of um, educator workshops that we offer. Mm -hmm. They're happening every month um, at the museum for one of these different curriculums mm -hmm. and we're very um, uh, pleased to be partnering with the Maryland Coastal Bays Program and Assateague State Park um, to in deal with many of those environmental education outreach programs. Mm -hmm. um, it's just and a way to share of, resources. Lots of free materials that can be taken back lots into of, the classroom. Lots of free materials um, and I would, you know, many people are looking for those, you know, just great places online and I would be remiss not to mention that the Pass It On curriculum 
is fully available online with incredible web extensions, which includes bookmarking of many of the um, series that people have seen on Pack 14, mm -hmm. related to our cooking series, related to when we had the, the beekeeper do the program at the Ward Museum or the spinner. So many of those films that were um, recorded through Pack 14 mm -hmm. in the museum's work are now embedded. Um, in this Pass It On curriculum and are part of it. Pac-14 was one of the partners mm -hmm. on the project. Sure. And so as a viewer, when you have maybe saw that um, series, you now, there's a way also through Pac's website, but it connects it to the larger scope of the area's um, cultural history. Great, great. And you recently had hosted the Ward World Championships. Uh, it's an event in Ocean City brings thousands of people to the to the area it does. every year. It does. Um, it's at the it's at the Roland Powell Convention Center in Ocean City, and it was a tremendous success. Um, we're always just really thrilled to see so many people from across the country and around the world coming to Ocean City to engage with that event. They then come to Salisbury to see the museum and maybe take some of these excursions to some of our other cultural sites. Um, it's just so, so you're part of the economic engine of the shore too. I mean, tourism is very, very important to our shore. And if it were not for for uh, you know stops like uh, the War Museum, it, it would not be thriving near as much as it does. I fully agree with that as well. <laughs> um, and what one of the what we realize is that bec you know people come to the museum. Mm -hmm. And that's one piece they then want to see more. And so we've been layering in these education programs that are actually field excursions. So we have photography workshops out at Blackwater at Chincoteague. We have um, on, I think, first Saturday's bird banding demonstrations out at Nassawango Creek Preserve. Um, we have other extension work that happens outside of the museum walls. So by becoming engaged with the Ward Museum, you actually will probably be able to quickly gain access to some of these field trips um, outside of the museum. Our volunteer um, organization regularly takes field trips outside of the region as part of um, sort of volunteer um, team um, engagement and mm -hmm. learning experiences. And we haven't talked a lot about our volunteer pool. Well, that, that was my yep. next question on my yep. list. So, so shoot. We, yeah. <laughs> I, as I have it, it says, "What opportunities are there for volunteers at the uh, at the War Museum?" Yeah, it's there. There really, um, we can get people involved in all different you know ways, from our grounds to our education programs to our exhibits to administrative work to working at our special events. Um, I mean, the scope of the work that our museum volunteers do is just really um, amazing. Some behind the scenes, but some so, right out there as docents and exactly, running programs. And. Exactly. And um, what I would encourage you to do is to get in contact with our volunteer director or to deal with the uh, Community Foundation's Shore Can Center, mm -hmm. um, and we'll be able to help match you up to some of the things that are um, most in your interest area. And, you know, we have some real rock star volunteers, people who have retired from their, you know, their, their career and now are engaging creatively with some of the things, some of the talents that they've been able to make um, a part of their, their life. Yeah, and I know you all are, are very active users of our Shore Camp mm -hmm. Volunteer Center. And uh, if someone's interested in volunteering, all they have to do is sign on to the website www.shorecan, that's S-H-O-R-E-C-A-N dot org and uh, the current volunteer opportunities at the Ward Museum and numerous other uh, or right. various uh, opportunities are all listed there and they can kind of kind of shop through and uh, you are a great matchmaker <laughs> and you've made some great matches from so. Shore Can to the Ward Museum mm -hmm. and um, we really appreciate that as a way to bring in new volunteers mm -hmm. and uh, we always have something new that we need help with mm -hmm. sure <laughs> So, but it's a great working environment, and uh, I know you and your staff are great to work with, and you, your other volunteers, you have some very, very pleasant, very dedicated people who are actively involved there, and it's uh, uh, great. If someone's new to the area, if there's somebody who's watching who's new to the area, it's a great opportunity to build a new social network right here in Salisbury. That's right, and m most of the times when people engage with the Ward Museum, they're engaging with one of our volunteers. Mm -hmm. um, that it's you really are our ambassadors to the community and have allowed the museum to grow in the way that it has and have just been very supportive of of putting new um, tools in the toolkit in order to help the museum's programs grow and reach more people and you don't have to be a hunter or a carver or what have you to get involved no we have people at all ranges of the professional network um, working with us mm -hmm. and um, yeah it's 
anything can happen. Absolutely. Great. Um, now, War Museums attracted attention outside the region also. Yes. Yeah, so some congratulations for some of those, but uh, a little bit. Uh, Maryland Life Magazine? Yes, we were selected as one of the Free State Finest in their um, May issue, and um, alongside some other museums in Maryland as one of the best museums in Maryland. I'm very happy about that. Um, we are now um, featured with the National Endowment for the Arts, their NEA Arts uh, web publication as an an organization on the move. Mm. Um, we were called out um, by them through our work with the folk and traditional arts community, so some national recognition there. Um, in years past, we've been featured by um, the Rand McNally Road Atlas. Uh, a place to stop on uh, the shore. <laughs> that's right, uh, one of the editor's best picks. Mm -hmm. So, um, and it's really quite uh, a recognition of how the community has supported the Ward Museum in order for it to, you know, have a, that level of presence where we get national, regional, and state attention. Okay. As we begin to wrap up here, Laura, how can folks, if someone's interested in learning more about the Ward Museum, how do they get in touch with you and your staff? Okay, well, check out the website is probably the, the quickest way to get the most information. You can subscribe for updates um, through our emailing system. Mm -hmm. You can find us on Facebook. You can stop into our front desk and meet some of our staff and just, you know, find out what's going on. Um, wardmuseum.org, and then our main phone line is 410-742-4988. Okay, and the best way to stay connected with museum activities is to sign on that website to subscribe. and subscribe to that, uh, that newsletter. That's right. And, and if, they, if they're not internet users, they're not computer savvy, just stop in. That's right. I mean, we drive right. by on Beagland Park Drive and yeah. read the marquee. Yeah. <laughs> the intersection of Beagland Park Drive yeah. and South Shoemaker Drive, uh, right next to uh, the uh, Parkside High School. Mm -hmm. uh, real easy to find. Uh, very convenient to Route 50. Just a couple of stoplights off of Route, I think it's one, two, three. Three stoplights off of Route 50. Four stoplights off <laughs> of Route 50. And uh, it, it's, uh, you have plenty of parking. Uh, mm -hmm. for your events and what have you. Very convenient and a great place for folks to visit. So we urge you to, to if you haven't been there, uh, sample the Ward Museum. Uh, Laura, is there anything I should have asked but I didn't? I want to plug our photography competition Let's this summer. Um, August 12th, 13th, and 14th, a brand new event. It's called the Art and Nature Photo Festival. So there'll be a competition for regional photographers of natural things. Um, there'll be um, a marketplace, there'll be lectures and demonstrations, all related to photography. Again, check our website out for full details or um, call the museum events department. Okay, and there will be a show associated with that? Right, or? all the um, works that are entered into the competition will be displayed and then the winners will end up in our gallery for a period of time, but it's a three-day event related to nature photography. So it's coming up in August, so save your pictures of birds and bugs and, At, and beasts and mm, <laughs> things horizons like that. Horizons and all kinds of things. <laughs> Anything like that. Well, mm -hmm. well great. Another celebration of uh, what how great it is to be a hero on Delmarva. Mm -hmm. so. Well, Laura, thank you very much for being thank with you. us today. We appreciate all the work that you and your staff and volunteers do at the, the Ward Museum and hope that we've encouraged some folks to uh, stop by and visit and become a more active part. Thanks. So, great. And thank you for uh, watching Community Foundation Spotlight. But a couple of plugs here. We're going to remind you the Community Foundation is uh, supporting the Help Strike Out Hunger program. It's a partnership between the Delmarva Shorebirds and the Purdue Foundation and area food banks. And we're raising money, food, and volunteers for area food banks. So find out how you can be involved in helping remove hunger from our community. Also, I'm going to ask you to stay tuned for just a, 30 seconds and learn more about our Help Your Neighbor campaign, another outreach of the Community Foundation to help those in need in our community. And thank you for watching. PAC-14 and Community Foundation Spotlight. Would you like to see your community organization or nonprofit group featured on PAC-14? To get started, contact us at 410-677-5014 or visit our website at www.pac14.org. PAC-14 is a great way to connect with your community.